Hi folks, welcome to the channel. My name's Colin, call sign MM0OPX. A couple of days ago, I had a question uh, on a comment on an old video I made on phase verticals. And the crux of the comment was, is it possible to have dual band uh, phase verticals for 20 and 40 meters? Now, I thought about this um, some time ago, actually probably a couple of years ago when I first started looking at phase verticals. I, I, I looked into this and I, I didn't think it would be possible um, after I, you know, I did a little bit playing about with the, the antennas themselves, got a bit practical experience. So, you know, fast forward this two years, I get asked this question a couple of days ago. So I actually had another think about it. And, and I think in a way, it may be possible to have uh, dual band phase verticals. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, I think there's a, an element of risk, um, but I, I think it would be worth it. Um, it's not something you could do on a whim. You would need to have a bit of ground and a bit of land or your garden and you need to be able to set it up and, and, and test over a period of time. Um, and, you know, just to tune the system over a period of time, I think you would need that. Um, but I think the best thing to do is um, I've got a whiteboard here with some different coloured uh, pens. Um, if, if I draw it out, I think it'll, uh, I think it'll make more sense. Let's see how this is going to work. So this is a first for me using a whiteboard for a video. But uh, but let's have a go. Right, first thing I want to do is I want to start with some radials. Um, so I'll do is like so. I'm not the best drawer either. Just one set. Right, there's our radials. Um, we need um, connection box on each vertical, like so. And we need two feed points. Okay. And we're going to have two elements on each. So these antennas, they have to, they have to be mirrors. The, 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 you know, so that's that's the key when you're doing phase verticals, they've got to dance together, so they've got to be identical mechanically and electrically. I should show that connected there. So that's 20 meters. This would be 40 meter. Right, so there's our there's our two um identical verticals. Um what do we need to put now? So we need to put control box two two relay two relay boxes. So this would we'll say that's 20 meter, another one. 40 meter. Um, both of these have got a delay line on it. Obviously, not to scale. And um, we'll keep these the same colour. So if that's 40 meter, that would go all the way over to here. And then all the way over to here. Actually, that's not right. I'll take that one away. Um, he's orange for that delay. The 20 and the 20. Then, so you're going to have um, down here of your shack so you need you've got coax coming out of here so you'll have 40 meter coax coming back to your shack and 20 meter coax coming back to your shack now you could have a remote switch there that wouldn't matter now Before we go, so obviously I should say that um, 
obviously we've got two fan verticals but they're sharing obviously they're going to share the radial field um, but the elephant in the room here if, if you've not already noticed is that although this is dual band the spacing between these is exactly the same so with the Christman phasing system typically they're they're fed at, at quarter waves um, so you, you couldn't have both at quarter wave because they're both on the same um, on the same vertical and they're both the same spacing but what you can do is you could have the 20 meters because they're on two separate systems you could have the 20 meters fed um, at quarter wave phasing and the 40 meter could be fed um, uh, could be eighth wave phasing so as long as it's working on um, on a harmonic so for example say you make your phase verticals for the the, the, the 40 meters for uh, 7.1 you could then have 14.2 um, uh, or if you wanted that a bit lower but you would have to make them exactly harmonics you couldn't have so whatever you whatever you made uh, 40 meters you'd have to double it or if whatever you wanted on 20 meters you would have to half it so that so that's the thing now each of these coax lines are different um now somebody may have correct me on the quarter wave phasing that's something that i've never done but what i'll do is so so for the 40 meter so this would be the eighth wave so this would be a 39 degree delay line and it would be a 157 157 uh, feed lines or, or phase lines, whatever you want to call them. But on the 20 meters, um, I could be wrong here. Could be vice versa. But I'm going to take a I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to say the delay line 71 degrees, and the feed lines are 84. I could have that. I could have that vice versa. So forgive me if I if, if I get that wrong. Um, so that's that's in essence our system. Um, I do have some big concerns. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, your um, your verticals have to be absolutely identical, both mechanically and electrically, to work. Um, and when you when you're tuning your elements, they need to be tuned just absolutely within kilohertz of each other. That, this is what I've found. They need to be exact. So the fact that you've got two elements together. I'm concerned at what interaction you may have. So as you're tuning the 40 meter element, are you affecting this 20 meter? Are you affecting this 20 meter? You know, there's there's a lot of variance there. But I think if you're able to get the 40 meter elements completely uh, balanced, equal, if you can get the 20 meter elements completely balanced, I think that this uh, uh, could work. Um, it would, it would take a lot of time and I think it would take a lot of trial and error. Um, I actually almost have all the equipment to do this. I actually have two complete um, or almost two complete um, uh, 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 phase, phasing uh, relay boxes, a couple of switches. You can actually also, what I've not shown on this is um, you, need a, you need a way of switching. I'll show it with this red. So what I would do is... I would take your switch, take it to a common common point, and then I would run that into the shack like so. Um, so this is basically then you could switch, because obviously you're only going to use one of these at a time. So if you've got one switch box, you could switch be switching between um, broadside or um, end fire. So you, so you could do that, or you could run two complete cables. But I, I wouldn't do that. I'd put a little T junction in it and and do it that way. Um, so yeah, so your, your feed boxes, I've actually made something similar. So you would need two independent feed points. What's not shown clear in the middle is, is you would have a common ground or earth in the middle. Like so. So that they would share the radials. So you would make sure that you had enough radials down for 40 metres. Um, in which then, which in which case you would have effectively twice as many radials on twenty meters, which is not going to do uh, any harm. Again, as long as the system is is balanced. Um, so, I suppose I better title this up. Um,
Yeah, so there we have it. So, you know, what what, what do you think? Um, do you think that I've missed something out on this? I mean, you really you just need a way of of of, of, of you know of logistically actually doing this. And I, again, I think I've actually got enough equipment here to almost make this. I don't know when I'm going to make it, um, but you know, I, I would really be um, really pleased to hear in the comments what, what what do you think of this idea? Do you think it would work? Um, have you tried it yourself? Um, would you try it yourself? You know, if if you want to try it, and you know, you know, um, and ask me questions, advice, you know, you know, my email's always there. You can get my it's good on in qrz.com. You can get in contact with me, um, you know. But I, I think this is could be a really good project, and um, it would take, as I said, a number of times. It will take time to get it optimized and get it working correctly. But you know when it's working correctly because you start to see the front to back between the systems. Now, on the 8th wave phasing, so on the 40 metre elements, your SWR should be reasonable. Um, on the 20 metres, you may have a little bit of a mismatch because you're not tuning for SWR in the system, remember, you're tuning for resonance. Now, common mistake that a lot of people, and I see it time and time again, and I'm going to make a video on this, is people say, oh, my, you know, my antenna is resonant at 7.1 megahertz, that's where the SWR dip is. Well, that's not correct. Where your antenna is resonant is where you have zero reactance. So in SWR, you have two components. You have a reactive component and you have a resistive component. And when the reactive component is zero, that's where you have resonance. And that may not be the lowest SWR, but that's where you need to be with these. Quite often, the lowest SWR, where that point is, isn't far away from lowest reactance, so you get away with it. But it's a mistake that a lot of people make and they're not getting the most out of their phased uh, verticals, their, their ground-mounted verticals. Um, a ground-mounted vertical should have a feed point of 36.5 ohms, resistive, zero reactance. If you're getting 50 ohms, um, then you have losses in your system. Now, if you've got elevated radials that are angled, that can bring the feed point closer to 50 ohms uh, uh, resistive. That's okay. But... Um, you know, just, just a hint, if you're tuning your verticals, you need an analyzer or a VNA to do it, tune for X0 or zero reactance. That's where you want to be and then see where your SWR is. And you'll probably find that it's not far away. But if you want the most out of your antenna, um, that's what you need to do. Right, there we go, folks. Again, tell me what you think in the comments. Do you think it'll work? Do you think it won't? But great to hear what you think. Um, until the next video, 73.